welcome to this meeting all of you uh, today we are going to discuss uh, scar uh, ectopic pregnancy which presented to us in a very confusing way and it was diagnosed as a degenerating fibroid and uh, our fellows dr vishakha and dr yenuka and dr bhargavi are here so dr vishakha will be presenting the case and then a little discussion by dr uh, renuka gupta and then i will also give my views on it so let us start with the case presentation first dr vishakha over to you we'll be starting the slide show now hello this is the case of scar ectopic presenting as t generated fibroid a 30 year old lady prior to live to abortion one presented with complaints of irregular heavy bleeding with clot since 5 months after taking pills for medical termination of pregnancy her menstrual cycles were regular 20 day cycle with average flow with no dysmenorrhea on her obstetric history her vaginal delivery 10 years back and one cesarean section 5 years back for low lying placenta in her native place her family history was not significant she was on alpha erection supplementation for medical uh, for hypothyroidism drug history was not significant next slide uh, she took pills for termination of pregnancy in october 2021 for six weeks amenorrhea with positive urine pregnancy test there is a no documentation of pregnancy on ultrasound after taking pills she bled for 20 days with clots in october after this she again had bleeding for 10 days from 14th of november to 24th of november in 2021 again she had bleeding in december january and february for 10 days from 10th to 20th of every month with initial four days heavy bleeding with clots followed by spotting so she thought these are regular menses with prolonged bleeding next slide ma'am these are the ultrasound images of patient but the images are so much blurred so uh, directly to come on the come on the ultrasound finding excellent she underwent ultrasound on 28 jan 2022 and diagnosis of incomplete abortion with rpoc measuring 4.9 to 5.6 to 5.5 cm was made a repeat ultrasound again done on 21st fab in this uterus was normal size endometrial thickness was 5.3 mm myoma with cystic degeneration around 4 by 4 cm was present at anterior uterus cervical junction with intramural and submucosal component same ultrasound finding was on her another ultrasound which has done on her native place around two days later. Next slide, ma'am. On her physical, general physical and systemic examination were normal. On parabdominal examination, scar of previous cesarean section was seen. On perispeculum examination, cervical lips and vagina walls were healthy. On per vagina examination, uterus was bulky, retroverted, mobile with clear bilateral adenoids. Next time. So now come to the plan of management. The patient was concerned and planned for diagnostic hysteroscopy and laparoscopy myomectomy was done. Her preoperative blood tests were normal. Written and informed consent for procedure diagnostic hysteroscopy and laparoscopy was taken. Discussion for myomectomy by preferred route as per the interoperative finding was made. Next time. So, uh, in her post-operative period, she was everything was uneventful, and the patient was discharged after 24 hours. So, patient stopped bleeding and was fine on follow-up visits. Post-operative serum beta SCG was also negative. So, we were surprised uh, with her histopathological report that reported with uh, retained product of conception. This uh, is the history of okay? Yeah, start. Start, start. Hmm. This is a hysteroscopy picture. For hysteroscopy, we use vaginoscopy approach. We negotiate the cervical canal and gradually we entered in the uterine cavity. This image quality is not too good. 
this is the laparoscopic picture both fallopian tube and ovaries were normal only there is a simple cyst present on right ovary you can see here there is a simple cyst on right ovary and there is a soft mass around 4 by 4 cm present at uterocervical junction you can see here then we injected diluted vasopressin in 1 raised to 20 dilution in subcapsular area because we are thinking it is pipe by a vasopressin helps in making the plane and also prevent blood loss so dilute vasopressin we are injecting you can see blanching is there it means vasopressin is in a proper plane it spill out vasopressin immediately sucked out you can see here uterus is hanging down it is proper retroverted uterus now with help of harmonic scalpel we gave incision and gradually we extend the incision and trying to find out the plane but here we um, we did not find any plane here like uh, fibroid in fibroid we easily find out the plane so again we thought it can be it could be adenomyosis but adenomyosis consistency is hard not so much soft here consistency is so much soft so we use the tooth forceps for holding the edges now we entering here and found some friable tissue the tissue are so much soft so very difficult to hold it so we are using bowel gospel for removing the tissue again we are removing the tissue bowel gospel is working like a sponge holder so now cavity is open because we saw the tip of dilator we look into the cavity and we are weighing as much as tissue from there now the soft tissue material corrected in endobag and endobag is removed by 10 mm for by 10 mm port with use of claw forcep so before closing the defect uterovesical fold is dissected with the help of harmony but the, we are not to use any energy here we use sharp and blunt dissection method for holding the edges of uterus we are using tooth forceps and for holding the bladder we we are using bowel grasper again uterovesical fold dissection done after this defect in closed by two layer for proper strengthening of strengthening of defect in first layer we use the vlog 10 suture and in second layer we use one number vicral so proper peritonization done it prevents again adhesion formation after this we use the vicral suture for down ligament application of both side so this is the final picture in my in this uterus is multi uh, mid position and there is a no uh, bleeding from a scar site stage line no zinc there proper hemostasis achieved this is the final view thank you thank you dr vishaka and it was a nice presentation and we apologize for the video quality because the actual video which we shoot in the ot is quite long and we edited so this was edited maybe twice so to make it smaller that is why the quality has slightly gone down and uh, now we switch over i welcome dr renuka gupta to please elaborate and tell us something more about the scar ectopic sorry for the delay my screen is sharing dr vishaka has been with us for last 4 to 5 months now and dr renuka joined us just for a month and uh, now you are ready with your slides yeah sure ma'am so good evening all uh, today's topic is scar ectopic pregnancy which is presenting as a degenerated fibroid as uh, dr vishaka uh, has told you about our case and uh, we have seen the video also so i'm going to tell you about the scar ectopic pregnancy scar ectopic is a rarest form of ectopic pregnancy there is an abnormal implantation of embryo within the myometrium and fibrous tissue in a previous scar site 
of the uterus previous scar can be because of cesarean section which is most common can be because of hysterectomy dnc abnormal placentation any surgery on the uterus like myomectomy metroplasty hysteroscopy and manual removal of placenta next the uh, early and accurate diagnosis is very important for timely management which can prevent the pregnancy complication like hemorrhage uterine rupture and it can preserve fertility with the help of timely management the incidence of cesarean scar ectopic is 0.15% in women with previous cesarean section and 6.1% of all ectopic there is no link to the number of cesareans multiple cesarean section may not increase the risk in this condition data from the study shows that incidence is 52% following the prior one cesarean section 36% prior to cesarean section and 12% after three or more prior cesarean section if you see the pathophysiology of the scar ectopic usually scar implantation occur due to the defect in the scar in a form of microtubular tract which develops due to the poor healing because of poor previous trauma previous trauma can be caused by the any of the reason which i have mentioned earlier and a scar ectopic gestational sac is completely surrounded by the myometrium and fibrotic tissue on the scar and it is separated from the endometrial cavity if you see the type of scar pregnancy there are two type of scar pregnancy type one is caused by the implantation into the previous scar with progression towards the cervical isthmic region in prior scar space uh, in cervical isthmic space in the of, or the uterine cavity in our case it is type one type of scar pregnancy in type two it is caused by the deep implantation into the scar defect with infiltration of growth towards the uterine myometrium and to the uterine serosal surface it can even invade towards the bladder also and can be presented with massive hemorrhage in first trimester which is very dangerous if you see the presentation usually these patient doesn't have any specific sign and symptom so easily misdiagnosed most common symptom is painless vaginal bleeding which usually accounts for the um, usually patient present with like a fetus of abortion at the age of 7 point uh, at the gestational age of 7.5 plus minus 2.5 weeks this condition as misdiagnosed as a uh, incomplete abortion so it can be a life threatening condition in the help uh, if we are doing curettage uterine rupture can occur even patient can go into the dic and death can be occurred so undiagnosed cesarean scar sometimes can be presented with heavy bleeding and hemoperitoneum even shock after termination of early pregnancy usually in type 2 of cesarean scar pregnancy for the diagnosis ultrasound is very best modality with a sensitivity of 84.6% transvaginal ultrasonography is most important diagnostic tool in a patient with suspicion of history of previous scar pregnancy serum beta hcg level is less than the normal uh, normal and we are suspecting a ectopic pregnancy with empty uterine cavity in ultrasound there are few differential diagnosis like anterior cervical ectopic pregnancy inevitable abortion rarely degenerated fibroid in anterior myometrium if you see the tvs there are certain diagnostic signs which are usually present in cesarean scar pregnancy in which is a empty uh, there is empty uterine cavity and cervical canal the gestational sac is lo located at the anterior wall of isthmic portion which is embedded within the myometrium and the fibrous tissue and separated from the endometrial cavity at the location of previous scar there is thin or absent myometrium between the bladder and the sac and negative sliding sign that is gestational sac position doesn't change with the pressure applied by the transvaginal probe high velocity low impedance vascular flow is usually surrounded by the gestational sac aim of the management is to prevent the massive hemorrhage and conserve the uterus for the further fertility and maintain the health and quality of the life of the woman so treatment approach depends on the gestational age hemodynamic stability availability of endoscopic expertise further fertility desire and feasibility of serial follow up by serology and imaging the conservative management includes systemic methotrexate and local embryocytes combination of both are also used in non invasive therapy methotrexate is commonly used when the gestation is not more than 8 weeks 
or there is no fetal cardiac activity. In both of these conditions, serum beta SCG level is usually less than 5,000 milli international unit per ml. And this therapy with a methotrexate is usually have a success rate of 71 to 80%. In surgical management is usually offered to the patient who is hemodynamically un unstable or fail to the medical therapies. It includes hysteroscopy, laparoscopy, laparotomy or uterine artery embolization. Surgical management usually requires general anesthesia, operative skills and proper infrastructures. Hysteroscopic evacuation is usually done for the type 1 cesarean scar ectopic pregnancy where the future, future fertility is not desired. Laparoscopic approach is most justifiable when scar pregnancy is deeply implanted and grows towards the bladder or in women who wants to conceive in future to give a strong scar. Principle of laparoscopic surgery in scar ectopic pregnancy is scar pregnancy is excised and removed in endo bag. Bleeding is minimized by the local injection of vasopressin. Hemostasis is achieved by the bipolar diathermy and uterine defect is closed by endoscopic suturing. So there is always pitfalls in ultrasound diagnosis of the cesarean scar pregnancies. As in our case, we have a um, patient with a cesarean scar ectopic pregnancy, but it was diagnosed as degenerated fibroid. And we are looking towards the degenerated fibroid. We have planned the patient for the degenerated fibroid surgery. But uh, eventually, it came out to be product of conception and cesarean scar pregnancy. So, few words about the degenerated fibroid. When the leomyoma increases in size, the vascular supply to it becomes inadequate and leads to the different type of degenerations. Degeneration results in, uh, results in a variable and heterogeneous appearance with minimal and irregular enhancements. Next. There are various types of degeneration in which the hyaline degeneration is the commonest, which accounts for the 60% of all degeneration. Other degenerations are cystic degeneration, red degeneration, myxoid, and calcified degeneration. Cystic degeneration is usually present in 4% of the cases in which it shows a hypoechoic and heterogeneous uterine mass with cystic area. MRI usually shows in cystic areas with portion of G2 signal intensity. Red degeneration most commonly seen in pregnancies and which there are uh, primarily occur due to the secondary venous thrombosis within the periphery of the tumor or rupture of the intratumoral artery. Next. Next. So in conclusion, not all cases of cesarean scar pregnancy present with typical ultrasound finding. There is always a uh, patient may have varied presentation. So high degree of suspicion is required for the early diagnosis and timely management of these kind of patients. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Renuka. And uh, I think we are quite clear now about various aspects of uh, ectopic pregnancy. You, you can stop, I have to stop sharing here. So um, this meeting has been very informative, but I also wanted to share a few more facts related to this particular video and show you one more video. I want to meet you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma All right. Your skin is visible. All right. So, so various facts about uh, misdiagnosis of cesarean scar pregnancy, not necessarily as degenerated fibroid, but as uh, there's. If you see, look at this uh, literature. If you just search on the net, you will find a lot of such papers where the scar pregnancy has been misdiagnosed. So let us see. When was it first reported? This was in 1978. When pregnancy in a uterine scar seculus as a cause of a post abortal hemorrhage was reported for the first time. And then if you look at journals, you find diagnosis of a, de a degenerative cystic uterine fibroid mimicking an ovarian cyst. So one hand, on one hand, you have scar, uh, scar ectopic, which is misdiagnosed. And on the other hand, degenerative fibroids also do not have any specific features. So they can also be diagnosed often as different things like an ovarian cyst in a pregnant patient or as a uh, as an endometrioma on sonography. So when we go back to scar ectopic diagnosis is ultrasound is one of the methods. A woman who has missed her periods and has an empty sac. So then we always search for the ectopic. Here in this case, you will find it always on the anterior uterine wall and at the level of the isthmus. Criteria as Dr. Renuka has nicely elaborated. Empty uterine sac with clearly visualized endometrium. Empty cervical canal, not to confuse it with cervical pregnancy. Gestational sac implanted in lower anterior, anterior uterine segment. So 
make sure it is lower anterior mark these words at the presumed site of cesarean scar and thin or absent myometrium between g sac and the bladder cut off is 5 mm so uh, this can also be a cervical ectopic pregnancy we can say that what differentiates this is that this will have a gestational sac implanted in cervix in cervical pregnancy the sac will be in cervix and the sac is located in the canal itself cervical canal rather than embedded in the anterior lower uterine segment and of course the myometrium will be of normal thickness it will not be a thinned out myometrium and if it is an abortion an inevitable abortion where the pieces are the, the products of conception are coming down here also you will find either the os is open she is bleeding and the myometrium will be of myometrial thickness will be normal and fetus can be seen within the, within the cervical canal ultrasound features of degenerated fibroids are they may have a complex appearance with areas of cystic changes the doppler may show circumferential vascularity however fibroids which have become necrotic or have undergone torsion will show absence of flow so there are no clear cut guidelines these are some of the images like calcifications in a fibroid this is a submucous fibroid which has undergone degeneration on mri now mri again is not very distinguishing in any particular features the key point is fibroids with high line of calcific degeneration are difficult to distinguish from non degenerated fibroids so even in uh, these fibroids can cause a problem in on mri for diagnosis however in calcification you may find signal voids so insights in the management what are the other things i wanted to discuss as a part of this one was that misdiagnosis second is what are the other options of diagnosing a cesarean scar pregnancy one is laparoscopic management and dr renuka has told which cases to choose laparoscopy and where to choose laparoscopy now there are newer techniques one is doing a hysterectomy by transvaginal approach see we all are evolving day by day and trying to do things by less invasive uh, methods so here if we have if we can do something transvaginally how we do vaginal hysterectomy non descent uh, non descent ndvh we open the uv fold and we push the bladder up similarly you can push the bladder up and reach the lower uterine segment then you will be able to uh, excise that area and give a good scar hysteroscopic management if it is type 1 projecting mostly into the cavity then a hysteroscopic management may be possible but in this case one caution is there either you should have determined how much is the myometrial thickness above that or keep an ultrasound probe to make sure that you don't perforate risk of hemorrhage is always there always a fear in the minds of gynecologists so uterine artery embolization has been used no uh, this laparoscopic uterine artery ligation has been used vasopressin and of course tranexamic acid you can choose whatever option is there i'll just show you a video elaborating this and one more thing i want to point out like in this case if you observe the uterus was very much fallen down it was a very retroflex uterus so here in the end we have done the plication of round ligament the role of round ligament as uterine uh, support is very controversial we always in anatomy we are told it is not a good uterine support but if it is totally fallen it is a very non invasive technique you can take a few plication bites through the round ligament and various topics have been done in patients suffering from chronic pelvic pain the result of plicating the uterus uh, round ligament is to bring the uterus slightly in the mid position the study was done and which showed there was a good relief for chronic pelvic pain in these women so let us see one video i'll just share that this was a case of a 27 year old lady with a previous uh, with a cesarean done 9 months ago she came to us with pain in abdomen 6 weeks in uh, scar pregnancy with a beta hcg of 8300 there was no sac seen on hysteroscopy so we moved on to laparoscopy see we all prefer doing things when in least invasive way because in previous cesareans you expect this kind of adhesions that are seen here like the uterus hanging against the wall and the bladder densely adherent so vasopressin was injected and there is always a risk of injuring the bladder in such cases so one of the techniques which i really love to do is retrograde filling of the bladder we don't necessarily fill it with saline in the beginning of the uh, surgery only we put a foley and uh, block it if it is not yet fully full filled you can give a lasix injection also in this case we decided to do a uterine artery ligation at origin so this is the uterine artery being exposed which is a branch of uh, internal ileum the ureter is running here 
this is a transient. We don't want to uh, compromise the fertility of this patient. So this is a temporary uh, knotting or ligation of the uterine artery. Here, one end is taken out and the longer end, is, a double loop is kept. And as you see, we pick up one, the smaller free end and make a loop. So this will be like something like what cobblers use. If you look at cobbler, cobblers, how they take bites through the shoes. So it's called a shoeless knot also, something like a shoeless knot. Initially, a lot of studies came, everybody was so much worried. Over the years, we have realized we don't need so much uterine artery ligation and uterine artery embolization because it's quite in your hand when you have laparoscopy and you have it right in front of you, you can control hemorrhage by just injection, vasopressin and tranexa, that's enough. This is again other side. The ureter is running in the medial fold here. And this is a shoelace again. The longer arm is, double loop is being made. These are narrow spaces, so it takes a little time. Now the bladder has been dissected down and you can see the bulge. So here, this is very thinned out, just like in uh, previous cesarean, when you see thinned out uh, uterine walls. Here you can give an incision either with a scissor or a monopolar hook or with your harmonic. And this is the trophoblastic tissue, which is, you can see the pregnancy tissue coming out, popping out. So this tissue was all removed and kept aside and we did suction and made sure it is completely removed. So this is the beauty that better than DNC also, because you can see that the cavity both from inside and outside, and you can see the dilator there now. An ovum forcep has been taken and from we placed the tissue into the open jaws of ovum forcep and it was removed. It was just pulled out through the vagina. It is important here to freshen up the margins because again, just simply tying these will not help. So freshen up the margins, whatever you have, create good flap so that the bladder has really been pushed down because you need some tissue to take bites also to make a strong uh, scar line. So here you can use bark suture or a vicryl. Continuous suturing, single layer usually is enough because there's not enough tissue that you require double layer. And at the end of this, hemostasis and reperitonization. This is covering the defect with it. And this is the uh, uterine like sutures which have been removed. And you can wait for some time, you'll start seeing the pulsations. You just pull the end and it comes out. So these are some of the facts which I wanted to show you all. And uh, I think this meeting is going to help you. These are small meetings. You all can show your videos. I think I had put everybody's videos off. So Dr. Bhargavi, Dr. Renuka and Shaka. So we'll have more and more such meetings. They're easy to organize and we'll keep putting them on YouTube because everybody can watch at their own convenience. And it is a good learning for the fellows also because whenever we present something, we benefit the maximum. So I feel uh, it will be good learning for them and uh, also for you. So I hope we have done it justice and uh, your time was worth the knowledge we have tried to give you. Anything else, Dr. Vishakha, Renuka, Bhargavi. Bhargavi has just joined us a few days ago, not even a week. So anything you would like to comment before we end the meeting? Mm -hmm. Everything you have covered. Okay. So next time, probably Bhargavi will be ready with some topic. Huh? Thank you all for watching our video. Thank you.